Hey everyone, today on the channel I'm sharing some of the insights of my trip. I was two weeks in Europe and it was amazing, so check it out. All right, first things first, I want to give a big shout out to my buddy Jody Robach uh, in New Zealand. Uh, his channel is worth following, you should really check him out. Um, the quality of everything that he produces in the fields and also his videos and the information that he shares. He's just an amazing teacher. He's just an amazing guy. And Jody, if you're listening to this, I think you're amazing and keep it up. I'm following, you're great. And I can't wait to go back to New Zealand and just spend more time with you and your family. You guys are beautiful, so bless you. Uh, so two weeks uh, ago, I was in Europe and it was amazing, uh, a lot of good times. Uh, I was doing some promoting work for uh, a few books that the Market Gardener Institute have uh, come up with in France. Uh, one of them is about uh, sharing some of the uh, microeconomics of different farms. There's profiles of eight different farms, uh, their sales, their investments, their gross margins, their farm designs, their stories. And so the goal of that book is to kind of share some of the more of the uh, more of the numbers behind farm startups and give farm models uh, so that others can really better understand what it implies to start a farm. And so that's that's Micro Farm, that's the name of the book in French, it's really cool. And the other is an eight book, um, eight volume kind of mini series where they take some of the teachings that I've passed on in the master class and we've kind of diluted to uh, some of the more, the gardener level and so it's 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 for gardeners it's for home gardeners uh, the collection is to my name so that's really inspiring who would have thought I went to France for the first time in 2012 to present my book the market gardener my dad was with me uh, it was very uh, it was a very important moment in my life because it was really the first time that I was traveling to Europe and everybody was so excited about what I had to propose back then and there's they still are today so I'm really stoked about that and every time that I go to Europe for me uh, besides taking a bit of weight because we drink a lot of wine there's always uh, fine dining happening that's really cool but I always take this time to also visit farms because you know visiting farms is important and any, uh, any, any growers listening to this, uh, this, this YouTube today, like taking the opportunity to visit a farm, you look at the details, you, you see the hinges on the doors, you see how they've installed their greenhouses, their tool shed, some, you know, I visit tool sheds in Europe and I always find a tool that I've never seen before. And so that's, that's really important for me and I always take, regardless of the, uh, the meanings and, and the bookings that I have, I always want to do a few farm visits and that's what I did this time and um, so one one farm in France was really epic uh, in a big castle up in Bretagne which is up north uh, it's probably my favorite part in France and it was really fun to see their farm Lucie uh, and her husband there they're amazing shout out to them you guys are, are good thank you for hosting me and I also went to Marseille and did another farm tour there and then I went to Italy and that was my second time in Italy and uh, really interesting to go there. Uh, interesting that they don't speak that much English, which, which is surprising and I had to really speed up my, my Italian. So, solo molto contento di verte, e really practicing talking with my hands all the time. Uh, good times, good laugh. Uh, La Rapa Bandata, really, really hospitable folks, really a uh, great community. I think there was 150 growers that came to the event that time and that was beautiful and I also then went to visit the headquarters of BCS, BCS walked behind tractors and I had never been and honestly folks it was really really interesting to see that uh, there's about 800 uh, staff working in a warehouse it's really a manufacturing plant everybody was smiling everybody was happy it's really kind of low-tech, high-tech. Uh, I, I don't want to say low-tech, it wasn't low-tech, but it's kind of like a mini, uh, you know, uh, it's like a mini where they build cars. 
but they, they, they build these walk behind tractors and they're sold in 80 different countries. The BCS walk behind tractors, they're sold under the brand Ferrari, Pasquale. Uh, there's another name that I don't remember now, different colors. And they're really epic. And I met with the, the main engineers. They're, they're talking about releasing a new electric prototype in September, so that's to come. They showed me the progress also that they made with um, the power clutch, the hydraulic systems. They're really uh, changing the game on that end. And they're working on small compact tractors, zero turn. So small compact tractors that can turn on a dime. Really interesting stuff. Obviously different price range, but it's still interesting to, to see all these, you know, all these uh, engines, all these tractors being, you know, the evolution of them. Um, it was also really fun to be, uh, you know, be made aware or to remember how BCS started. So their first machine was built in the 30s. It was a shuffling hoe. Um, I don't know if that's the right word. Let's see, yeah, the, the cutting blade, the grass blade, that's, what, that's how they cut the... Uh... Well, it was the first, it was the first time in kind of history that, that cereals were cut mechanically. And that was the invent that was the first invention of BCS. And it did the work of 80 people in in you know in an hour. It was just amazing. It was changing the game uh, you know altogether. And they built on that for all for 80 years. And they still have these machines to do small grains. And I had seen them before but now that I kind of had one in my hands, I just realized the potential of this, like to do small grains in, in here in America. Yeah, there's, there's, there's opportunities to do that. And I think there, there could be a market because the grains here are all GMO. All the grains that we have are either GMO or they're, they come from, uh, from from seeds that have been completely depleted of all of all their nutrients so to to start again with grains that are you know of high high quality i think there's going to be a demand for that and having smaller patches and machines that are adapted for that i think there's a way of the future i also think going to france and italy that the natural wine uh which is really big there there's a lot of small uh, natural wine makers. There's a lot of young people that are into natural wines, having, you know, hectares, two hectares, five hectares of grapes that they make their own wine and they market th th themselves without, you know, any chemicals. Uh, I think, I think that I see the potential in America for that. I, I don't know why there's not more people doing, making natural wine, embarking on that journey, but it's, uh, it's just so cool when I go there to see that the whole the whole industry of natural wine is, is really like perhaps like organic was 20 years ago, still kind of pure. A lot of people doing it from the heart, uh, not low tech, but kind of human scale. You really see the people behind the wine. And I think that's really important. That's really cool. I also had the opportunity to meet a pretty, a pretty crazy Canardo. Uh, Matt the farmer, okay, so he's an Italian uh, farmer, uh, has a really popular YouTube channel there in Italy, uh, 300,000 plus followers, makes a video every, every day. And I was with him on his farm with his gang hanging out and he was just like supernatural character, like a typical Italian full of life. We had so much fun together. His YouTube channel is translated into English and I met the person that's dubbing him. It was really interesting. There's uh, Matt's gonna come up with, I think one or two videos about uh, how I used the BCS and I was kind of show, he's kind of new to this kind of small scale farming. So I was showing him how to make beds and, and how to straddle the beds and how to work with the different implements that, that BCS offers. It was really interesting and it was really very, uh, it was very kind of talkative. Let's just put it that way. So that's it for this week. Uh, I'll, I, you know, I'm back in the gardens. I'm back at the old mill 
and uh, I think we're going to get our website translated into English sometime soon. So if you want to check out uh, Espace Old Mill, the website, I'm giving the link is below. Also, I wanted to say that this is the last day uh, for the master class. If you're interested, it's the online course that I teach. It's the last day to register is today and it's worth it, okay? So if you're not sure about everything that you're doing, if you don't know exactly what kind of uh, spacing that you need for your crops, what kind of density and the cedar that you should be using, there's so, mu there's so many information in Masterclass. We're covering like 35 different crops from seed to harvest. We're going through all the motions. Uh, the tool is there for you. Check it out if you want to learn more. All the information is on the link below. Besides that, everything's super cool here. Things are growing. I'm out in the fields. We're planting the garden. It's exciting times. And we have a lot of really interesting uh, content to share in the next few weeks with you all. So stay tuned. Please make sure to connect with us. Uh, like the channel. Share with your friends. I hope you guys are well. I hope things are growing. I hope you're growing. I'm growing. It's all good. JM out. See you next time.